Good day, lords and ladies, and welcome back to Age of Free Free the Legends with me, Cornus Knight. As we get back into the campaign, now people were asking if I could show off the um, the actual battle, the one I lost previously, to see how the main storyline goes if you win. So that's this is what we're going to do. Also, this is going to be another slightly shorter episode just because I have a lot of stuff going on at the moment. It's preventing me from doing my normal like half an hour long videos, give or take. Just because obviously I have to then do the post commentary stuff afterwards. So, get people set up. And let's show you how you're going to win this. It's going to be a relatively straightforward play. We're going to hold on the. We're going to hold, like I said in the previous video, we're going to hold in the north with our Ents and our mutated Swamp Ivy and our Archers. And probably going to use the dryad as well, and the rest. And I'm going to try and clean up, um, clean up the right flank as quickly as possible. So we're going to just pound them, pound them like they're going out of style. I'm going to send um, the Mandrake route down here to deal with these guys. I do agree with the Fuax. My associate, the Fuax, who watches these series, made um, a comment that it would be nice if the mission where you get captured and made to fight each other was actually included in the main, the main like victory road, as it were. So like you win, but even if you win, you still have to do like the one-on-one -on -one dueling kind of thing, because that'd be really good. I agree with him on that. In all honesty, I think that'd be quite a good thing to do. Right, so they're pushing up their forces, but my ma my primary concern right now is I just don't want to kill off this these this group on the right flank just to get rid of them. Once we've got rid of them, we can just turn our attention to the north and just wipe out their forces there. Right, so let's get this done. Sand in the mandrakes, blow them up. Not, not a bad amount of damage, considering. I mean, the Mandrakes aren't, like... If I had to decide between um, Mandrakes or um, Goblin Bombers, um, I'd probably go... Sorry, Goblin Sappers. I'd probably go Goblin Sappers. I just, I just like them more. Right, let's get in here. We'll probably put him here, because I just want to kill off one, kill off one unit at a time. Right. Chuck in a fireball. Oh, split! Nice try. Now we hit all of them, but not enough to kill them all. Hmm. Now this just looks like it's going to be a relatively straightforward fight. Our placement is quite good, and it will take a couple of turns for the enemy units to get around us. The fire and both miss, which is nice because those were poison attacks. If one hits him, and he's got a heal, which is annoying. Yeah, the harpies are a pain. I mean, they're not bad units. I just don't like them. They have a high mobility, which is normally something I really like, but they're just so squidgy. They don't start with very much health. Two hit, two hit points is not enough hit points, in my personal opinion. Or if you, or was, uh, I suppose, for being practical, is that you shouldn't give a base unit loads of hit points. But at the same time, I'm really not inclined to micromanage them to get them so they can last long enough to actually be a useful unit. Ah, that's a painful 70% miss. Another fireball. Try and catch me. Come on. Say, is that nice your? try? Kill off those two. Break that one. That's good. Excellent. Also, um, the developers mentioned I could have had Lexus wearing the Undead King's crown, um, wearing Krell, Krill's crown. Um, it was to do with the fact that she had a piece of neck, she had a necklace item on, and I didn't realise that the crown counted as a necklace item, so. which is a bit confusing, but, like, I have to get rid of it. Personally, I think, I, I can understand why they didn't put it in the armour, because it would have made you have to compete against armour to wear the crown, which is stupid. But hey ho. Maybe they should have crowns and stuff as their own piece of head jewellery, but that's another point for another day. Right, see something more units. 
won't really matter to us that much. Summoned units don't have a particularly long shelf life and slimes do not move particularly quickly so they're not going to be a massive pain. Those guys come in. One of the parasitic fungi gets a hit off against one of our Ents which means I'm going to deal with those guys next. Suffer them up a bit. Try and catch me. Say, Left with both that's energy there. Wipe those guys out. Not as much damage as I had hoped. But we can still pick, pick away at some of these guys. Get a hit off there. The Ents can punch these people in the face. Let's see if we can get this one. Yep, that one goes down as well. So let's just see if we can soften these up some more. Yep, that one dies. Kill off this one. I mean... Ugh, squeak. Die, ugly, you mess with an Anari, you get a Balva. Oh, Balva, says the, Dal says the Dryad. They're definitely interesting characters, that's for sure. Flash. Right. That harpy goes down. You got to see what I mean. I'm just not a fan of the harpies. I mean, if you got them earlier on in the campaign, perhaps when you could build them up. But as they are, I, I, well, we're not actually that far into the campaign, to be honest. But I just, I just don't like them. They're too fragile, in my opinion. Uh, the problem is, I look at it from a slightly biased viewpoint because I always think back to the knights and stuff that you got in the first game, who were a bit more tanky. Um, it's like it's the reason I didn't use the wolves when you were when I was playing as the as the or as the green skins. There you could have had basically goblins riding wolves or a bunch of units that could basically summon wolves. Um, but I just didn't use them. I just didn't see the point. Sacrificial units in this game tend to be actually quite a bad thing because. Um, Compare, you you run the risk of um, with, with lots of sacrificial units of your own troops morale breaking, especially oh, on harder splendid. difficulty settings. So I don't tend to use them. I'd rather have a small elite force that I play well with than having a large expendable force, which just causes me all kinds of issues. It's like how you break orcs and goblins in this game. It's that you literally just kill as many of the goblins as possible and the orcs tend to break because they have like they have stacking morale penalties. Right, most of their standard forces are broken. We got the slime, but the slime won't really be an issue. We can send the ants to deal with the last of the fungoids. We just deal with Lexus or Lexa. I wonder if we kill her if the story will change. We've got the sapling from that. Yeah, we can poke at these guys. To be honest, their summoning time must be almost out. Summons in this game do not do not last long. Except in some very rare instances. Right. Let's see what we can get stuff done. Right, let's get up there. The Elder Stream at the bottom ran off, which is nice. Don't have to worry about him. Right, now what else? Okay, yeah, the summon's starting to fail. That's what I expected to happen, to be honest. So, fireball these guys just oh, to get them out of the yeah. way. Ah, still going, not a massive problem. Kill that one off. And then we just charge Lexa next turn, to be honest. So, as I said, this is a, pr a pretty straightforward fight. Nothing was out of the ordinary or unexpected. Um, a relatively good fight. <laughs> That's a nasty miss. So far, I find the the forest faction to be an interesting faction to play. They have a lot more tactical flexibility than the dwarves do. Um, what else do we want to do with this movement there? Yeah, I find them a lot more flexible. The unit composition so far is very interesting. I wonder if we can capture her. Hey, watch it. I don't want to have to wash this tunic soon. You won't need it, old hag. Hmm, that was so sweet. We're going to love each other. Right. 
disturbing. Let's see if we can capture her, because I'd rather have her, as a, have her as a hero in the faction rather than just dead. Because I don't want to really run the risk of losing her. Right, so we tie that one up. Break it. I wonder how you break the bones of a fungoid. Do they even have bones? Say, is that yours? Then again, you can break the bones of a slime. I'm pretty sure a slime doesn't have bones. Right. Give her a punch in the face. She's down a one hit point. Let's see if we can capture her. No, we cannot. Okay, that's annoying. I just to steal some stuff then from her then. Grab her healing potion. Punch her in the face again, and we'll punch that fungoid in the face again now. Uh, he tied he's tied up, so it's not a huge issue. Try and catch me. I'd like to try and get that archer fungoid because it's got three hit points, which means it's a more experienced fungoid unit. I find one of the things that you can do in this game quite easily is that you can very quickly cycle out your starting units because you, you can capture, if you're up against plant creatures, you can capture more experienced units quicker than you can just waiting for them to level up outside of combat. So, it's an interesting, um, it's interesting style of gameplay, I suppose, that you'll, you know, I suppose it's something to do with nature, you're recycling a lot of your units very quickly. Like, for example, once I get this unit up here, with the free hit point, I'll probably dump one of the one of the beginning fungoids that I had hey, because he's yours? not as good. Nice try. Now we've caught that one. Let's beat Dark Living Daylight out of this one. Oh, shall I? And we, yeah, there we go. Manja creature regrown. We won the battle. Send someone to get the mage's cloak, which is very nice. Oh, and then we'll see what's popped into the waking world once we get back into the world map. That's something that's also interesting. The developers have asked if I um, I have been thinking of going back and playing the games on a much harder difficulty. Um, they have asked that if I'm going to do that, that they wait until I wait until they've finished um, tweaking. They're in the they're in the middle of basically doing some very serious upgrades to um, to the games, to the first and second games. Um, so I'd really, really like to sell that off to you. Or if I know oh, Lexa, she'll before. take yes, any opportunity yes, 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 to make yes, life hard for you. me. Assuming she's not dead, which by the sounds of Azil's letters she isn't, she's probably sending that pair of beasts in my direction. Yes, yes, we know. This is salvageable. I can make this work in my favor. Karma coming around to get or, you. Okay, we've heard I can hope before. she points them towards yes, the. Yes, yes, yes. Right. So all this is the same, from what I can tell. There's nothing different about it, which is slightly disappointing. But hey ho. Um, let's push forward. What else do we have popping into existence? Some new stuff, which is very nice. Finally, that mermaid turns up. The alchemist lab is here as well. I'll probably get it early because the alchemist lab, re you rec recruit, you recur, so you reap more rewards with the alchemist lab the sooner you get it, in my experience. Right. So, mermaid. That's probably where we want to go next. And then we'll try and do the dwarven tunnels. Do we want to repair the fountain, perhaps? Right, you can only use the mermaid once every 24 hours, real time. So, let's see what we get this time around. Looks like the dragon's teeth, yeah, snatches the pearl, giggles, yeah, dragon's teeth. Bit of a shame, because I like using Seals with Balvo, because his defense is relatively low. And we already have the double attack feature from... He already starts a double attack, so they're not that useful, to be honest. Right, so do you unlock any skills? The downside of losing or of winning this battle is that we didn't capture any of the parasitic fungoids that we got in the first one. But in retrospect, eh, we didn't come off too badly. Yeah, I need to get him up to to, to elite status. She needs to get to elite as well. She's almost as his one XP point off. Right, Lexa has such a no, well, no real experience to speak of. 
poison resistance. Do I want to get na na nature nature's wisdom for him, or just go straight to regular? Probably go straight to regular, to be honest. Mutated ivy. Yeah, we'll put that one up to veteran. And get regen on that one, which is nice. Right, so probably turn some of these guys into parasitic fungoids. He says before he accidentally makes an elder fungoid. Yeah, this is the problem I had. I was, um, I pressed the wrong button. It's like, dang, I didn't want that. I didn't want the elder fungoid. Because we've got enough elder fungoids. Well, they are a useful range unit to have. A couple of the parasitic ones, because they're useful for tying up units. If we get them with that and we get them with the regrowing ability, it will be useful. Get these guys up an experience level, so when they actually finally do turn into a, into Ents, they're a bit more useful. Yeah, nothing really doing there, nothing really doing there. Right. So we, yeah, that's pretty much sorted out. So we need some items. We'll go with the fire wand. Ooh, the wizard cloak. I'll give that to um, the dryad and the sheik and the witch can get for normal clothing. But I want to give her the crown of the undead king. So off comes the tribal necklace. On comes the crown of the undead. Krell's old crown. I did love playing the necromancer campaign. It was so much fun. Crown of the Undead is cursed, we can't take it off. Which doesn't make a massive issue. Incorporeal, which is nice. Command the Undead. And we'll get her a Ring of Scholar so her XP regenerate. Well, she gets more XP quicker, which is something that she really needs. Right, so healing potions. I'm saving up the mana shards because obviously I want to get the necklace of mana because it's useful for magical users. Right, so we've got two more pearls to give to the mermaid at a later date. Switch those out to give her equipment. Yeah, this is just prep, this is just all prep work. Because once we get this done, we won't really have to look at her stuff again for a while. Magical items in this game, unless you've got like a ton of cash, you don't tend to have much. You tend to stay with the same items for a while, unless RNG gives you an interesting um, variation. So yeah, I mean I don't want to lose Dragon's Teeth because I they're okay. They're not particularly great for Balver because he already has like half of the stuff that they give him. So we're probably gonna stick with the dwarf sword. We're gonna sell the Dragon's Teeth for a bit of extra cash. Berserker Armor is the same issue. I'd normal normally take Berserker Armor for a melee character, but I already have double attack. I don't need it. Plus, the fact is his defense would be lowered, which is not great at this point for him to have the Berserker armor on. So I really need to find him some actual decent stuff. Right, yeah, that finishes all that tidy up. Where else do we want to go? Hmm. Right, let's see. But that's the same, and we can get rid of the curse on Lexus if we want. But that's not going to be a good idea, to be honest. So let's just get out of here first. What else do we want to do? Do we want to go? Yeah, we'll probably go. And I am very tempted to rebuild the Alchemist's place early on. What's that smell? Says Balva. Uh, such a foul burning stink, says the Dryad. Hello, travellers, over here, says the transmutator. Or transmuter. Who's the man? What happened here? Oh, where are my manners? I am a seeker of knowledge, and these are the remains of my laboratory. This man is weird. Kill him or move along? inquires Balva. Where I was, was on the brink of the greatest discovery, turning rare metals into gold. I was so close. Oh, that actually sounds interesting. And your laboratory just exploded? Oh yes, see, the press of valve, it was just a bit too tight, says the alchemist. He seems pure of heart, if dangerously clueless. We should help him, Balva. Right. Right, okay. That's good. 
We got that rebuilt. Do we want to rebuild the fountain? It's going to be like a thousand gold, but we do get a permanent morale buff for it, which is useful if we want to have non-plant faction units in our in our army. Um, I do believe though this would be better on like a harder difficult like at normal or easy levels. Morale isn't like a massive problem on the harder difficulty set less settings. On my experience, morale becomes super important, especially since that. All the enemies are kid have buffs, so you can't break their morale as easy, well, as as easily as it were. Right, we've got the Idol of Happiness, which is nice. Um, I probably will play this, like play through this on like the hardest difficulty setting, just to show off how you play it differently. The the difficulty massively changes, like your tactics massively change. Um, in, when the difficulty goes up, because you can't rely upon the same tactics, you have to use a lot more tactical awareness, a lot more understanding of the mechanics of the game. Um, we'll sell the golden bar to get a bit of money back. So that's probably something I will do. I mean, I'm probably going to stay with the Age of Fear series for a while because I want to show off the multiplayer, which is something I haven't done in the other ones. There's some really nice mods coming along as well for the game that I want to show off um, when they're finished. Right, we've seen this before. I'm starting to wonder why I even bother to read out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've heard this all before, guys. It's the same stuff. It doesn't really change. So we're just going to skip through it, grab some units. Just because I'm sort of running out of time for the day and I just want to sort of get everybody set up for the coming battle for the next episode. So we're going to take some of the fungoids, the parasitic fungoids, which are useful. Um, switch out the uh, mutated plant ivy. So we get that out of the way. Um. What else do we need to get done? Yeah, let's put that in there. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah, bring the ogre along as well. Right. Yeah, I mean, the ivies are nice, but we'll replace them with some other unit types relatively soon, just because I don't like the sortness of their range. So we get that done. What else? Yeah, get that one done. Okay. Who else do we want to bring along? Uh, got another another par another fungoid that I really probably don't want to have. What should we do? Yo, we'll switch them out. Yeah, we'll take that one along. Yeah, that will do. So out comes him, and goes him. Right. Good, 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 good. Yeah, we'll just get everybody lined up and ready to go. I'm fairly happy with the composition of this force. Right, potions. Make sure everybody has potions. He hasn't got a potion. Give him a potion. Yep. Good. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Right, so that looks good. A nice balanced force. So we can test it out in the next battle. Let's go. Looting, here we go. We've seen this bit already. So let's just get through it. Now, I'm surprised to see Lexa. Lexa's basically on her own business. We're going to do a similar tactic that we had with the previous ones. We'll have our heavy hitters on the um, on the flanks. Well, we'll have our slower movers on the flanks with our heavy hitters in the middle. And we're just going to have to plow straight in. We'll put the we'll put the mandrakes right on the flanking edge so they can like wrap around and explode. And we'll have our range units tucked right behind in the line to provide battle support. And then we'll next episode we'll go straight for the kill and just hit them hard. Yep, that looks good. Right, so it's a bit rushed, folks, but I am on a rather tight schedule today, so this is just where we're gonna have to leave it. And we'll start off the next episode with a nice, big, juicy fight. So, until then, I've been Cornus Knight. This has been Age of Fear 3 for Legends. If you have liked, please press the like button. If you wish to subscribe, please press the subscription button. You can follow me on Twitter, you can follow me on Steam, or you can leave a comment in the comment sections, and I'll get back in contact with you. But until Wednesday, I shall see you all next time. Goodbye, folks, and I shall see you all next time. Goodbye.